Hello all. Today we'll be seeing that how we can handle category features and we will also try to implement it by using Python. Um, so whenever we get a machine learning use case uh, and the data set that we receive, most of the features you will find this kind of category features. So let us first understand what is category features and then how we can, what are the different ways to handle it? And then we'll also see that what are the various tools like sklearn and pandas and how we can do that. So to begin with guys, uh, category features, uh, like whenever you are, you, whenever you see a data set, right? And some of the features, some, uh, if I take an example of gender, in gender, you may have seen that you have different types of categories like male, females, not specified, and all the other records will basically be repeated by this. So here, some of the properties are that you will be having some fixed set of values, you know, fixed set of values in all the records. It will be either male, female, not specified. Okay. Now, in this particular example, what we are seeing is that, suppose if I take an example of gender. So first step, always remember that machine will never be able to understand the string categories altogether. You know, it is very difficult for them to understand. Now, if we take some other cats, other features of example, it, uh, other features will be continuous random variables or discrete random variables. In that, suppose you will be having some age values. Suppose if you, you'll be having some amount values or salary values, right? These all values are basically understood by machine learning algorithm. The reason they are understood is that because machine learning algorithm does some kind of internal mathematical calculations. There are a lot of equations, you know, in the machine learning algorithms that are basically applied. If you are considering a reg regression kind of problem statements or a classification kind of problem statements in those. But if we have a feature which will be having this many fixed set of categories and if we try to give these categories directly to a machine learning algorithm, it will never be able to understand, you know? So this particular raw data, when I say in the terms of category feature, is not suitable for the machine learning algorithm to process. So here we'll be trying to discuss how do we, you know, apply feature engineering on category features and how to handle it. So the first step that once we see a category feature, we basically have to apply a, something called as label encoding. Now, when I say label encoding, what it is, label encoding a sim, is a simple concept in where, wherein the number of features that I have pre, that are present in this particular feature column, you know? So suppose there is a feature called, uh, there's a record where it has, this particular feature has a value called as mail. Now this mail gets converted to a new label or it gets assigned to a label like zero then female will get assigned to another label like one, not specified will get assigned to a new label called as two. Now, when we are considering this, right now, all these particular labels will get repeated. So again, not specified will be having two value, female will be having one value. Now this particular label encoding has a very big problem. Now, what is the problem? Let us discuss about it. Let us consider that I have a feature which is a binary category feature. So when I say binary category feature, let me say that I'm having a feature F1 when my output is just like male. I have only two different types of values everywhere, you know, male and female, male and female, male and female in all the records. Now, usually when I try to apply a label encoding, this will get converted to new labels like zero and one. Now, when I have just zeros and ones, you know, and when I try to convert this into a label encoding and pass it to a machine learning algorithm, the machine learning algorithm will be able to distinguish it very easily because they are just two categories. One is zero and one is one. So when the value is zero, it will consider that the value we are talking about male. And when the value is basically one, we are basically talking about female. But in the case of multiple category feature, now you can see here the values like zero, one, two. Now when the machine learning algorithm will receive this particular inputs like zero, one, two, what it will consider is that two is greater than one or one is greater than zero because altogether you can see that in machine learning algorithm, different mathematical calculations will be happening. So this basically says that not specified is greater than female and female is greater than male. So this is not a correct scenario altogether, you know? So we should always remember that we should not stop only in label encoding for multiple category features like this kind of example for a binary category features i think we should uh, we should basically stop in the label encoding you know because here i'm actually getting the values as zeros or ones which is very very easy for a machine learning algorithm to distinguish 
But if we have multiple category features, we should not stay, stop in label encoding and we should begin a new step, which is called as one hot encoding. Now, one hot encoding applies a simple mechanism wherein what it does is that based on the number of categories present over here, it will divide those into that many number of columns. So here I have male, female, not specified. Now here you can see that it has got converted into three columns that is male, female, and not specified. Now, wherever the value is male, you know, that gets that particular column in that particular column, wherever the male column is there, that value gets one remaining all gets zero. You know? Similarly, whenever there is a female, female particular uh, feature or column gets one remaining all gets zeros. Now the machine learning algorithm will be able to distinguish clearly because the feature that is having the one value or the column that is having the one value is basically indicated with that particular column. So here, whenever I have one over here, it is basically male. Whenever I have zero over here, it is basically female. Oh, sorry. Whenever I have one over here in the female column, that is basically indicating that this is basically representing, this whole record is representing a female row. You know, female, um, basically it is all about the female, you know. And then after doing one hot encoding guys, it is always remember that suppose after doing one hot encoding, oh yeah, I have male, female, not specified. I'll just try to drop this column. Now see whether do we have any impact after dropping this column here, you can see that I'm having one zero, right? That basically indicates that this is the male male row. Then I am having female as one over here and zero over here. That basically indicates this is a female row. Again, if I have both the value as zeros, what does this basically indicate? This basically indicates my third column that is not specified. Now, since it is representing this thing, we can clearly say that this particular column is not required because whenever the values of male and female is zero, that is basically representing my third column. And this particular condition is basically called as dummy variable trap. Dummy variable trap basically indicates that you don't have to use all the columns. You just have to use N minus one column. Now what is N? N basically indicates that how many number of unique categories I have in a particular feature. And by using this, by doing this, you will be able to solve this particular problem. And this particular problem is basically called as dummy variable trap, right? Now going ahead, guys, I will be showing you how to code, how, how you can code this by taking a wonderful example of a data set. And then I'll be writing the code line by line. So it will be beneficial for you and how you can actually do it. Now to go ahead, uh, what I will also uh, suggest you is that we basically have two different ways, you know, one by using a scale on library and one by using pandas library. Now in this, both the techniques, what I felt is guys, pandas library is quite easy. It is very, very easy. Whereas Escalon library, it requires some lines of codes to write. You basically have to use label encoding, label encoder, one hot encoder, one hot encoder libraries to do this. So I would suggest you uh, to use pandas because there's a function which is called as get underscore dummies. And this will help you to do this too within a line of code, you know, convert your whole category feature into dummy variables, you know, like this within a line of code. Now let us go ahead and try to see how we can do it practically. Now to begin with, uh, I'll just go and show you how to do it. So initially I'll try to import pandas as PD because I'm going to use pandas a lot. Then I'm going to use numpy as NP. So doing this, uh, I'll just read a data set, which is like PD dot read underscore CSV. Don't worry about the code guys. I'll be providing you the code in my GitHub link. So I have a data set, which is called as startup dot expense underscore expense dot CSV. So if I go and see my DS dot head now here, you can clearly see that I'm having some columns like R and D spend administration, marketing spend state and profit from this. Uh, this is basically a regression kind of problem where we need to determine what is the profit based on the other parameters like R and D administration, marketing or state. So, here state, you can see that it is clearly a category feature and it has only three unique features. So what we'll do is that I'll try to convert this into a dummy variables. Okay. So in order to do this, I'll just use, uh, I'll just use DA oh, PD dot get underscore dummies. So I may get some errors. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I, I, I hope I may not get any errors because 
you know, we can quickly do this. Otherwise, again, we'll get some stuck in some errors. And, but error is actually good. You know, you'll be able to see what kind of errors you are making so that will make your perfect map. Uh, and there is also a parameter. Uh, I just don't remember parameter. Okay, drop underscore first. So drop underscore first is equal to true. If I set it, that basically means that it is going to convert this particular state columns, you know. Now in this particular state column, you can see that there are three unique categories, right? So that will get converted into three columns. But from that three columns, I don't want one column because to solve the dummy variable trap. So for that, I'm setting up this uh, drop underscore first is equal to true. Now you can see that once I execute it, I just have Florida, New York uh, column. So I'll just let me write head so that I get just get the top five records, you know. Uh, so drop underscore first is equal to true over here. Florida and New York over here, the California column is dropped and uh, this works in an ascending order. So let me just save this whole uh, dummy variable in a variable like DF1. Okay, I'll just create a variable DF1. Now in this particular DF1, I have dpd.get underscore dummies. And now if you want to see the DF1 is basically all my dummy variables for the state column. Now the next thing is that I will just do a concatenation operation. In the concatenation operation, I'm just going to uh, give my df comma. I'll just put df one comma df, and my axis will be one. You know, I just need to append it, append this new column that is getting created with my df. So if, if this gets executed, this will get executed. Fine. So here it is. It is got executed. Now you can see that Florida, New York has got appended in front of this. But I still have a state column. First of all, let me replace it back to my DF so that my DF will now look like this and just remove this head part. Right? So this is my DF. But I still have the state column, guys. Uh, I've converted this into category feature, but I need to drop this also. So what I can do is that I can just write DF dot drop. I can just give my state column. And I can suggest my axis is equal to one. And I can also do in place is equal to two. You just don't directly try to put uh, in place is equal to two. First check, you know, whether it is working or not. Then you try to put it. Now you can see that the state column is not there. I can just write df.add. Perfect. Now I have got my, now this all are my independent features. What I see from here and profit is my dependent features. So let me just convert this into independent and dependent. I think from here you will be able to apply your linear regression algorithm. So I'll just write colon minus one and I'll write y df dot i lock colon comma i'll just give my three card because this is actually present one zero one two three four five so my output is basically present in my fifth record now the next thing is that i will just try to do a train test split from sk learn dot model selection yes model selection import train test split now I'll just say x underscore train, uh, x underscore test, y underscore train, y underscore test, and I'll just write uh, oops. in test split. I'll just give my x comma comma y comma. I'll just give my test underscore size as 0.25, right? So here it is, it has got executed successfully. I'll just apply my sklearn dot linear regression models so that it is present in linear model. I'm going to import linear regression. Here I'm going to create an object called as a regression, which will be having a linear regression. And then I'll just say regression dot fit. Here I have my x train comma y train. Fit. It's got executed. What I'll do is that I'll create my y pred, that will be my variable, and I'll just say regression dot predict, and just may put my x underscore test. What I'll do, I'll just check my r square value because I need to see what accuracy it is there. So I'll just write from sklearn dot metrics to import. What I have to go into import r to square. Now um, here I'm just going to write score is equal to R2 square, and here I'm going to compare with y underscore test, y underscore right. That's it. Now, this is my score value. You can see that I'm getting 0.93, and it is very good score because it is very, very nearer to one. 
and this is basically my regression problem statement uh, but the main fact is that i try to solve uh, what is a dummy variable uh, and this is how you solve a dummy variable but uh, there is again one more problem with a dummy variable let me consider an example suppose in one of the feature i have like pin code you know and suppose in pin code i have values like 2001 2002 this is just an example 2003 2004 and i have suppose 500 unique pin codes throughout you know uh, how to solve this kind of problems we i cannot just convert this into 499 columns because i said that n n minus 1 columns will get created for this 500 unique pin codes right so there is another mechanism for this a very beautiful hack what i do is that i convert this category feature of pin code whenever i have so many into a numerical feature shocked by hearing this how can i convert a category feature into a numerical feature yes we can we can convert it so let me just show you suppose uh, here i have a feature where my values is 2001 2002 2003 2004 again 2001 this is again repeating okay 2002 but i have unique 500 now with respect to 2001 suppose i have my output like uh, 1 0 0 1 0 okay or uh, and 1 now suppose i want to convert this 2001 category feature into a unique integer uh, or, or into a numerical feature so what i'll do i'll just write f1 dash how well, we just need to find out for 2001 how many times it was one now, suppose if i have 2001 here also and it was one over here so from this i can see that 2 2001 is basically having one one so i'll increase i'll just make sure i'll just count that suppose the count is two divided by the total number of times 2001 is present now you can see that total number of time 2001 is present for this 2000 you had zero so i did not increase the count from two to three so this will be like two two divided by three and this will somewhere be like you know um three three point two twenty three seven six point six yeah so this feature for this 2001 will get converted into a numerical feature like 0.6 everywhere now similarly we do this and uh, we do this for each and every feature for each and every category feature you know or the pin codes uh, and this is just an example where in a generic very good example because in most of the scenarios suppose if you're having a state column where you have 100 states in, inside that you should basically try to use this technique and convert it into a numerical feature Trust me, it will definitely work, guys, because recently I, I was doing a problem statement where initially I was getting 78% accuracy, but by just implementing this technique, it increased by plus 7%, you know, and my overall accuracy was 85%, which is a very great increase, you know, very good increase. And it is still in production, it is working very, very good, you know. So apply this particular technique for multiple category features uh, where you have many category features like pin code or number of state, number of countries. This particular technique where you convert your feature category feature into a numerical feature simple just count how many times one it is present divided by total number of this particular pin code uh, how you have and uh, this is basically the end of uh, how to handle category feature guys i hope you like this particular video um make sure please to subscribe the channel share with all your friends uh never give up keep on learning um data science is the thing that is happening i'll see you all in the next video have a great day have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you.